I'm Scott Allen Miller. This is Nicaragua. And take a look at the sky behind me. It's the dry season here, and we've got a really rainy afternoon. Of course, it's not raining. Well, it's maybe drizzling uh, as I'm recording, but I was out earlier today doing some recording, and we suddenly got a really good rainstorm. Not a thunderstorm, just rained. Beautiful. It's about as good as it can get. I'm out in Calvario, and I'm just doing some walking around, exploring the city, getting some exercise today. Hola. And uh, Nicaragua. Nicaragua. And uh, <laughs> just enjoying the fact that we have some rain. I'm in Calvario because my daughter is at the dentist. And so it's my opportunity to get some exercise and some fresh air and enjoy this perfect weather. So I'm bringing you along with me. Getting a nice rainstorm during the dry season gives me a perfect opportunity to talk to you guys about what the climate and weather and all that kind of stuff is like here in Nicaragua, because it's a little bit confusing, especially if you're coming from North America. And I'm just checking out this really cool alleyway here. Look at this, got this huge house over here. It's like dirt path that goes around. The what is this? Everything in Calvario always catches me by surprise. I kind of, we got to go down here. Now, keep in mind, I don't have my lavalier. Uh, for those who follow the show all the time, you know, my lavalier is kind of on the, the fritz, planning to get a new one in a few weeks uh, when I'm in the States. Uh, but until then, I'm without one. So this is a, so I can't turn the camera around and talk at the same time, which I know some of you appreciate when I turned around and just shut up. But for the moment, you're going to live with me talking. This is a really weird little alley with this beautiful second story up here. I hope you can see it. Of course, the rain makes it really pop because you get more vibrant colors uh, when you have overcast skies. So what an interesting little alley this is. And uh, where does it go? Huh. Always expect the unexpected in Nicaragua, even on a street that I've walked on many times. So. If you come from North America, or Europe for that matter, you're probably taught that the Northern Hemisphere has four seasons, and the Southern Hemisphere has four seasons, but reversed from the Northern, season, uh, northern Seasons. And if you uh, live on the equator, there are no seasons. But that's just this tiny band on the equator and nothing else. That's what we were taught, and that everyone has these, and that's how the world works. And it is not true. So did that is a very North American, European view of weather, and there is some merit to it, but the concepts like the summer solstice, the spring equinox, while astrologically speaking or astronomically speaking or both do exist, they are not really understood or thought about in much of the world. And when you come down this far into the tropics, all of that stuff starts to fall apart. Those things, those concepts of the equinox and the solstice and the really strict seasons that happen on those dates and are, and are all, you know, managed by the position with the sun and all that really is a, a temperate zone concept in the tropics and, and to some degree, even in the subtropics that all starts to fade away in its usage. And you don't really think about it in that way very much. And down here in Nicaragua, and in the entire region, we are in the Northern Hemisphere. So in theory, we should be on the same cycle as North America, as the United States, as Canada, but we're not. And there's something that's really important. There's two really major aspects to this. First, this is like a bodega or something. And then this is like, I don't think I've ever shown this on the show. I know I've been past here. It's just like a huge garden in the middle of the city. I, I'm pretty close to downtown. Like I'm not very far out. This is a really beautiful wood, wooded area. That'd be a nice backyard to have for sure. Uh, and so the first thing is that there are not four seasons. There are two. That throws people off. They're called summer and winter. So we have half as many seasons and we don't have the, inter, the intermediary seasons. The second thing is that they are reversed. So in North America, in the middle of what would be spring, here it turns to winter, and in the middle of what would be fall in North America here, it turns to summer. So winter and summer are each twice as long as they are in the US, but the, the middle of the winter is the middle of the summer in the North, and the middle of the summer is the middle of the winter in the North. It is so confusing that everything is different, but at least the middle of each thing is roughly in line with the middle of the other. 
but even that's not exactly, it's just kind of. So it gets very confusing. Now, the way that they define them, because the temperature here really doesn't change. It does a little, technically. In the, uh, the, the, what are summer months here, it's actually cooler. So that adds to the confusion, summer is not when it's hottest. So summer here uh, has January and February, right now, we're in the absolute middle of summer. It's also known as the dry season. And that's why they call it summer, is because the lack of rain makes it seem like it's long, sunny, hot days. And the sun is really what defines it. Oh, this is a cute little spot. Let's take a look. And this beautiful tree above too. Oh, hola. <laughs> like trying to get my attention and then we're shy when I turned around. And uh, so, so because it's essentially unrelenting sun. I mean, for six months, the sun never goes away. Not, not exactly never, because it went away, but it uh, it's like hidden little driveway there. And uh, so we, because the sun's out, you really, you bake all day long and you think that everything's hotter. But if you actually look on climactic charts, you'll find that it's actually about two degrees cooler overall than the winter. But in the winter, we get rain almost every day. And so during the winter, what is like August, in the United States, uh, it feels cooler because there's no sun for large portions of almost every day, and often there's rain, and that's the season that often brings hurricanes. Now, we don't get hurricanes here, but we'll get a lot of rain and storm and, and cool weather from the hurricanes that hit the Caribbean. So we're not like in, in danger from them, it's not something we worry about, but it is, it is something that affects us from a climactic standpoint that a, a good hurricane on the, on the Caribbean will bring uh, quite a bit of cooler weather, right? So, so our winter here, we feel like it's a lot cooler, but mostly we're just really wet a lot and it's, and it's overcast. So it's a completely different thing. But technically the day-to-day -day temperatures are just a little bit higher during that season. It's all perception. So this is uh, technically a monsoon country. And so these are real monsoons in the traditional sense uh, that we're dealing with. Same as you get in like India. There's only a few countries that get true monsoons. Now I'm in an interesting spot and I wanna show some of this. So we're gonna take a second. I'm gonna spin the camera real quickly so you can see these big gates. And I wanna show the houses on this side, like the whole little spot that I'm in, I wanna show here. As I turn the camera, you probably noticed a giant church over there. We're gonna go there in a second. So you are gonna to get to see it. But first I wanna show these houses I'm by. Got a couple of really beautiful houses there. Here, and we're still in the southern part of Calvario. So we're not, we're not far out from the city center, but I mean, there's a bit of traffic, but it's not an area that a lot of people like wander into. Now, I'm gonna do my best. I'm just gonna walk, I'm gonna turn the camera and walk by. There's people here, so I don't wanna like interrupt them too much, but I wanna show that this is in the middle of the city. And you'll see similar in like Hinotega, for example, in the middle of the city, like all of a sudden you'll see something like this. So that is the Mormon temple here uh, in the middle of the city. And they, they all look pretty similar. And I just realized that I don't have my, my jitter control on the camera. So I'm gonna stop for a second and fix that. I apologize. The first 15 minutes or so of this are way jittier, jitterier than they should be. That is totally on me, I apologize. All right, we're now stabilization locked. And I'm sorry that you had to watch all of that shaking all around. Hopefully it at least looks pretty good. It is such a gorgeous day out here. I'm really, really enjoying this. Maybe we'll uh, find some footage to pop over the top of that part of it. So you don't have to jitter around quite as much. I'm not sure what we'll show. We'll come up with something maybe uh, as our, and by the way, while we're talking, oh, gorgeous house in the corner, gotta show this. 
Say hi. Oh, hello. <laughs> So if you're into like cottage core, this is a beautiful cottage core style on the corner. Totally my thing. My daughter Lutana would really like this. And the one next to it. There's like some neat, neat. Now I got to head back. I don't have a lot of time today. And uh, it's a nice little walk. It's nice to be able to get some fresh air and getting a break here in the summer. This is, you know, a lot of people complain about how hot things are. Okay, I got some wild bicyclists coming. I got to get before they run me over. For me, for me, I'm a rain guy. I'm a pluviophile. I want it to rain every day. I would love it. And the summer here really is. That's one of the hardest things for me is not the heat, but it's the sun. And I can handle going. You guys see me. I go out and I film in the sun every day. And that's fine. It doesn't, it's not that the sun itself bothers me, but I need the rain. I need the cloudy days, the soft gray light, the bright colors, the high contrast. My eyes really suffer in the sun. I don't handle direct sunlight very well for my own eyes. It looks great on the show, so I, I appreciate it from a how good it is for the camera perspective, but it's terrible for my own eyes in, in real life. And oh, I gotta show the parking lot over here. I can only imagine this is meant for the church. This is huge. That is crazy, I'm coming back past because I'm heading back and that dog is just so excited. There's three dogs in there that all want to bark at me. So for me, getting a break, having the rain, like I would much prefer to have the rainy season year round. It does get a little bit annoying if you want to go out at night. I'm going to show these houses again as we walk by, this time stabilized. It does make things like going out really difficult because it often rains in the evening. So when you want to go out to dinner, it can, the rain can be so heavy because it is a monsoon, right? It's that we're not using that expression loosely. It's an actual honest to goodness monsoon. And that makes driving hard. It typically only lasts for 15 minutes to two hours on most days. So it's very rare that it completely impacts your day, but you can easily end up with, uh, when you want to go out to dinner, when you want to do something that you're unable to, or driving is difficult, you, you can't walk places because of the rain. So that becomes a big inconvenience because of the weather. It generally doesn't start until late, so you can do all your daytime stuff, do all your work without a problem, normally. And uh, it typically doesn't go late at night. Of course, sometimes it does, but generally it doesn't. So it's just this kind of dinner hours uh, get to be a little bit of a problem. I want to grab a, a good shot of this place too. But for me, the rain is worth it. I like how exciting it is, how dynamic it is. The, the cloudless, sunny skies every day for most people is great. If you're coming to hang out on the beach, you're coming, you wanna do sightseeing and you wanna take photographs, oh, it's fantastic. But if you live it every day, and most people here do prefer it, but for me, I find the sun very tiring and I need the softer clouds and sky and rain and, and the cooler temperatures and the fresh water and you know all the, the plants get really green. So during the summer, right now, the plants are kind of on the brown side. Not completely, we're not in a drought or anything. Um, it's not like, you know, it's not like, uh, oh, where did I just see that's in a terrible drought right now? Ca um, Catalonia is in terrible shape, but it is, it is on the, you know, plants get dry during the summer, they turn brown. And then in the winter, everything just turns lush and green and it's so beautiful because then you get the bright greens everywhere and you get that dark cloudy sky with the gray and, the, and it's just the most beautiful color. Like one of the most beautiful things for the human eye to see is vibrant greens with, with a mid gray color combination. It's just your, your, the human brain and the human eye is really attuned to that as a comforting uh, thing for, for obvious reasons. It's, it's where safe, healthy, uh, production of food comes from historically. And so we're kind of built to, uh, to appreciate that. So that is our, that's our climactic thing here. It's not very big and dramatic, but it's a thing that throws people off that it's both that we only have two seasons, that the seasons are based on the rainfall or the sunshine rather than 
on the solstice and the equinox that they are flipped from what you have in North America while we are still in North America. All things that we were taught in school wrong. I mean, they're right for North America, but they're wrong for Central America. They're wrong for a lot of the world. And so it's just something that you have to be aware of that you have to reprogram your brain that all the things you were taught about the seasons don't apply here. And uh, you're in for a surprise if, uh, if you're gonna try to use North American weather. And of course, the reason that, hola, the reason that North Americans do that, the reason that they use those segments of seasons is because it, it's when you grow things. You use that knowledge, you use that prediction to say, okay, when it's spring, this is what we do with plants. And in winter, this is how we hibernate, basically, right? We eat the food we've stored. And when it's summer, we gotta do these things with plants. And in the, in the fall, that's when we really do a bunch of harvesting the plants to prepare for the winter and on and on and on. All that stuff is super important. It's based on the time of year. Well, that's the thing that's consistent here in Nicaragua and here in all of Central America, because we have a rainy season and a dry season. And because they're about the same temperature, the thing that matters is the rain and the sun. That's what affects us, not how much sun we get, because that's basically the same year round. Not uh, when it gets hot, when it gets cold, because that's basically the same all year round. It's the rain that makes the difference. So that's what determines which plants you can grow when, what, what you plant, when you harvest, all of that is based on the rain. Look at these cute doggies. Oh, he's so cute. Hopefully you can see him on the show as an adorable dog. So that's why, that's why it's the way that it is. Thanks for joining me. Like and subscribe, a little bit shorter episode today. Make sure you get down in the comments. I wanna know, uh, I have a couple things that we're, we're asking about. One, just in general, get in the comments and ask your questions about, you know, life in Nicaragua, relocation, Latin America, travel, currency, all those things. Hop down there and ask your questions. You guys asking questions is what generates content for me. That's how I know what to talk about because how else do I know what, what people are interested in? And I wanna know what you guys think of the new schedule. This is our uh, first video being filmed with the intent of it being released in the afternoon rather than the morning. Not that that changes what I make, but it's we're, we're into that cycle now. We're trying it out. I wanna know how this afternoon release, is there some unforeseen negative circumstance that I hadn't thought of? Let me know, all that kind of stuff. And uh, boy, uh, feedback on other things. The merch, um, I put out a video, hopefully it went out, asking what people would be interested in for merch. Oh, there's some cute dogs over here. They're behind a fence though. I don't know if you can see them. He's adorbs. And uh, yeah, you. And uh, I wanna know, you know, is it shirts? Is it coffee mugs? Where are you? All that stuff. Watch the episode or comment on here. I need to collect some information because I would like to get merch out. Like that'd be so cool. And we have an opportunity to maybe do it. So, so certainly take a moment uh, and pop in there and uh, let me know um, your thoughts on that. As always, you can support the channel directly from buying me a coffee at buymeacoffee.com slash Scott Allen Miller. And uh, if you could watch another episode after this, just click on it, let it play in the background. If that's what you're gonna do, that works out so well for me. Uh, that tells YouTube that you love the show, like subscribe, do all that stuff, tell someone about the show and I will see all of you tomorrow.